الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلا يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome again to another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show guest of the week as always I'm your host Ismail Bullock coming to you from Charger Television and now inshallah in our final episode of Ramadan we want to discuss how to end Ramadan as they say on a good note, how to end it in a, in a good way. And we want to touch upon the important aspects that come towards the end of Ramadan, like the Zakat al-Fitr, like Eid al-Fitr, and what next after Ramadan. And to do that with me is Brother Al-Amir. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, you know, we come to, the, come to the end of Ramadan, of course, and we already mentioned in our previous episode the importance of the last 10 days, etc., that we were approaching upon but now we're coming to the end of Ramadan so we want to focus really we want to kind of give some advice to those people on how they can end their Ramadan well before we go on to the other aspects. Jazakallah khair for inviting me to the show um, you know Ramadan for a lot of us is uh, I mean for all Muslims it's a it's a beautiful month it's a beautiful event uh, that eventually comes to an end right and like we say always good things come to an end uh, it's dunya, everything passes, and Ramadan will pass, and we, one of the things that uh, we as Muslims always look forward to is hopefully to be alive for the next Ramadan, so that we can uh, do more ibadah, do more fasting, and do more uh, good deeds, and, and all those things combined. Um, another thing is that we as Muslims, uh, we need to, uh, uh, of course, we are sad Ramadan is leaving us, right? Uh, but we have to prepare ourselves and continue what we've been able to establish in Ramadan itself so far. So that those good deeds don't stop with Ramadan. And before we even continue on talking about that, like you said earlier, in the, I mean in the beginning of the show, uh, let's talk about how to end Ramadan well. One of the, one of the most famous things we do in Ramadan is that of, uh, of, of Zakat al-Fitr. Is that of, of, of what the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, the Messenger of Allah said, enjoy Zakat al-Fitr as a purification for the fasting person from idle talk and obscenities and to feed the poor. And whoever pays it before the Eid prayer, it is an accepted Zakat. And whoever pays after, it's just an ordinary charity. So this is a command from the Prophet Wasallam telling us in other hadith also that this is a must for every fasting person, be it a child uh, or even the children who are not fasting, like if you have children, if you have family and you have like five children or three children, but two of them are fasting, you still pay zakah on the whole family individually. Uh, so we need to do that because our enjoyment of Ramadan, it comes of course in, in, that, in that view of when we're breaking our fast, right? And that enjoyment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that when sees the the, the, the fasting person who fasted for his sake only, uh, seeing him or her having that date and drinking that sip of water and that enjoyment, that, that pleasure uh, is what we also enjoy, right? I mean, subhanAllah, sometimes you dream about it before you're about to fast, uh, break your fast. Uh, what we in Islam, we need to try to do is that those who are less fortunate, that they have the same ability uh, to do that and especially to enjoy Eid which is which comes the day after the end of Ramadan Eid al-Fitr uh, uh, or the feast of sacrifice uh, no, the feast of, of, of Fitr uh, which is giving us the pleasure but also making those who are less fortunate have something to look forward to so they're not hungry on that day so that they can also enjoy with their families or, or with their loved ones or with their friends and so on now, uh, we're not going to go into fiqh details too much about how much to give and, uh, and so on. We know it's a sa'a and so on. Uh, but what I want to discuss uh, regarding this is that, uh, in this segment, is that uh, we should try uh, to give this uh, sadaqat al-fitr or zakat al-fitr personally. Meaning that we should try ourselves to find those poor individuals and hand it to them in food items, be it rice, barley, 
raisins, uh, whatever is edible, you know, whatever those foods that we know people eat in that region uh, or that area. Why? Because when we are making this connection, when we are doing this, uh, this will uh, build bridges with poor people. And we get to know them personally. And also that will humble our hearts. That will make us more humble, more, uh, the humility will increase, right? And we'll be more thankful and grateful for what Allah has given us. And at the same time, our hearts will open and they will be softened by doing this. The Masjid of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I saw paradise and most of the people in paradise were poor. Also, we will be associated with them uh, and Allah will hopefully raise us among those as well. Another authentic hadith uh, says, the impoverished shall enter paradise before the rich by 500 years. It's one of the hadith, right? So by seeking out and giving our zakat al-fitr, we may be gaining companionship of the righteous, even if this is for a short time, right? But if you live the separate life of your own, you know, worldly, whatever, and then you don't ever go and associate with such people, uh, less fortunate, then you may never get that feeling and that sense of entitlement happens to be there for such individuals, which we ask Allah protection from it. Uh, because whatever is given to us is by the will of Allah and we should be grateful to it. Not that we are entitled for it. Oh, I deserve this. No. We are thankful to Allah, grateful to Him for what He has given us and we end with that. And we say, uh, we don't say, you know, this is where the pride comes in, this false pride where a person says, individual says, but I, I deserve this. I worked very hard for it. You know, subhanAllah. I mean, if you're working hard, in your uh, mind, you're working really hard. Some people are digging trenches, not trenches like, you know, the canals for water and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like they're working so hard and they make in one day what you make in an hour, for example. Some people, right? Does that mean it's working hard? What, what does that mean, working hard? Not just that. I mean, it's interesting to, uh, to also mention that whether people like it or not, who succeeds and who makes wealth is by the permission of Allah. And we see that there are people who have great business minds and have great ideas. Exactly. But it just doesn't work out for them. They open a, a business, it fails. They start a project, it doesn't kick off. And then you find somebody else whose business idea in comparison is quite ridiculous, but right. it takes trend and everyone, it becomes a trend. And for that year or two where that is popular, this guy becomes a billionaire. And in reality, he's nowhere near as clever and as intelligent and business-minded as that person. So sometimes it literally boils down to that is the qadr of Allah and who Allah has allowed either for his benefit or yes. as a punishment for him. Because yes, exactly. we see some people, when they get money, they used to be kind, friendly, down-to-earth, good person. They got money. Forget about the sinful things they may get involved in, but they became a proud, high and mighty, looking down at people, not being friendly. So being stingy, being stingy. So sometimes someone is held back from getting that kind of money because it, they could have a negative effect on them, whether they could fall into certain sins or it could change their character. But blessed is that individual whom Allah has given wealth, but he spends it definitely in a proper way, gives it away to charity a lot. You and know? there's a lot of people who don't do that, which is yeah. why we can see from this hadith that a lot of the poor will go before the rich because many people who have that wealth, they don't use it in the correct way. Now, we talk about appreciating our blessings. The Prophet ﷺ says, look at those who have less than you and you do not look at those who have more than you. Uh, this is more appropriate so that you do not overlook or undervalue the blessings of Allah that you have. Basically, in other words, like you see in English, put it all in perspective. Whatever you have, right, it's more than a poor individual has. So you kind of compare yourself to that and you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me so much. But what you have, there probably are people who are richer than you. So don't look, look above them and say, oh, I wish I could have like this. And you aim in your heart, striving very hard for that. And if Allah has opened the doors for you, Alhamdulillah, if not, don't be in that mindset where you are pushing yourself into that. So you uh, 
uh, you're looking at those who are having less than you, so you are grateful for what you have. And this will make you share more. And this is one of the commandments for Zakat al Sadaqat al Fitr for us to do that. I mean, of course, you, you, what you mentioned, and we know that's, that is a statement of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he said, Look, don't look at those who are above you, look at those who are below you. Because then you're always going to have this kind of being grateful that I may not be the richest, but there are so many people who are less well off than me. I might not have the best car, but there are so many people who don't even have a car. Exactly. So if you always look of those below you, you have this kind of, to some extent, self-contentment. But if you always look above, you'll, it will never end. And we know that the Prophet said that, the, end. that the, the son of Adam, if he was given one mountain of gold, he'd want a second one. So I mean, I, mean, I know it's, a, it's kind of a lousy example to use. I'll use it anyway. Uh, all this Forbes uh, richest persons list comes every year. And guess what? Every year there's almost somebody new. So if one were to look at those people and aim to be that rich, there's no end. There's always somebody else. And there's always more wealth and so on. So it's like, where does it end? Right? Like you said, there's no one individual who's been the richest for the last 100 years, 50 years, 20 years, whatever. It's just that the list changes, right? So the one who's looking into that will always, it'll be, it'll be never ending uh, battle with that, right? And, you know, some of those individuals, they say, uh, oh, uh, in order to achieve this, you have to sleep three hours a day, four hours a day. All you have to do is work, 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 work. Well, we as Muslims, we have to worship Allah. We have to also work, but also we have to spend time and, and money in charity. And this is this, uh, when we talk about Sadaqat al-Fitr, how important it is to give away, but also how important it is to do it individually by yourself, seeking out those who are less fortunate and giving it to them. Uh, it will be making you more grateful and this is lost when you're giving it to a third party, meaning that if you give it to charity and so on, which we say it's okay. Uh, I know there's a difference of opinion regarding this issue, giving it to a charity or versus giving it by yourself. We say, inshallah, it's okay both ways, but it's better if you can do it individually because this will build a, 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 a kind of relationship and also will make you feel more humble, right? Uh, thirdly, it makes uh, the, the sympathy built for them from a month of fasting something tangible and brings to a, a real personal peak because right now you are reaching the end of the month and you, you've done all you did. Now we're talking about already... Uh, the night prayers, the Qiyamul Layl has been finished. We're talking about almost the end of the month. And you've done all you've done. You spent a lot of time in Ibadah. You, you prayed, you fasted, you read the Quran. And now this peak of, of, of actually doing a tip, different type of a deed at the end of the month. Because like I said, most of the deeds so far has been between you and Allah. You know, prayers, fasting, Quran, and so on. Uh, now it's that where it's a good deed that's for sake of Allah, but doing it with, you know, people, interacting. And this brings a different kind of a satisfaction to an individual. And the scholars mentioned that many benefits uh, of fasting will feel us more sympathetic to the poor to such an extent that, subhanAllah, uh, we know regular zakah, the 2.5%, is given one time a year. That time of year could be any time of the year. Could be Muharram, could be... Uh, Sha'aban, it could be uh, Safar, any month, right? But we know that the most people do it in Ramadan because it's easier to part ways uh, with that. Even the ulama, some of them recommend to do it in Ramadan because an individual is more charitable in that month because he feels, he, she feels hunger and so on. So he will or she will part ways easier. So even, even giving zakah is, is, is easier and also doing zakat al-fitr, uh, it will also be uh, beneficial to the person who's giving it. And I'll of course, the you. one who is, who is receiving it. Sure. Let me just hold you on that point. We're going to go for a short break, inshallah. Join us after this break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Now, just before we went to the break, obviously, we, we mentioned the fact that, you know, one can give his zakat al fitr in Ramadan because generally in Ramadan, you know, you're feeling, inshallah, you uh, his, should, his zakah, his regular yeah, his zakah. zakah yeah. Yeah. You should be feeling more charitable, you should be feeling more 
religious, you should be also the reward in Ramadan is higher. Uh, yeah. It's higher, yes. So that's the regular zakah, and you know a lot of people do that. As a matter of fact, personally, when, when zakah to be given, we do it like for example, twenty fifth Ramadan. It's just one of the things we you do, subhanallah, and it just continues year to year, which is a beautiful thing in a way, right? Uh, when it comes to Sadaqat al-Fitr, Zakat al-Fitr is, is that the goals of fasting and it's kind of actualized because you, you've now given to others. And you know, one of the practical things we always like to talk about is what, one, what does one individual do before Eid al-Fitr? We usually go for shopping, right? Shopping in a sense that uh, buying, for example, Eid clothes, or some items for the house or some, some get-together or party you're preparing at your home, inviting people over, or you want to wear a new dress, your wife, your kids, you know what I'm saying? So we tend to do that. We do recommend not to go in the last 10 nights shopping. Try to do your shopping before Ramadan. That's the best way uh, so you don't have to waste time. But we do have items we buy. Before Ramadan, we say, you know what? I bought this dress for my daughter she would love it, but you know what? I'm going to put it in a closet. I'm going to hide it so she doesn't see it. It's like a surprise for Eid. And you'll know, keep it in a closet for two months, for example. What about those? Don't we want the same t to do for, for others? You know, so you are now doing this. At least make it easy for them with food. So they have maybe money to spend for something else. But imagine some of those poor families don't even have money for food, let alone clothes. Subhanallah. So, you know, if a person has to worry about what he or she is going to eat tomorrow, it's really a stressful place for a person to be in. I mean, we cannot imagine that that one who doesn't have food for tomorrow, it's a big worry. Sometimes we, we may fall short of, uh, there's always that joke about coming towards the end of the month, things that, uh, you know, so sometimes we as people who genuinely may earn well, if, if money runs short, we start to get a bit like, not panic, we start to get a bit worried, a bit like, what's the word I'm looking for? We start to get a bit stressed. The fact that, you know, oh, money's running short or this month I had to make a lot of expensive payments. I don't have as much to spend as usual. So imagine, like you said, imagine if you're someone who faces that on a daily basis. Yeah, ex not paying like, uh, you know, for extra things, paying for food. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of mind-numbing just to think about that. The person may not have for food. Not for... Oh, sh do I even have a uh, roof over my head? Or if I do, it's a hot weather right now. Uh, you know what? I cannot even afford to put the AC on. I'll just boil inside. But you know what? Food is more important. When a person has to make a decision like this, you know what? It's not an easy decision. It's tough, right? So, uh, and of course, handling or handing uh, the, 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 the sadaqat al-fitr, zakat al-fitr, individually, you go by yourself, it breaks down social and economic barriers between the Muslims. We, for a fact, know there are some Muslims who are poor and some Muslims who are not so poor. And this will help break that. Uh, by distributing your food with others through community services, we as individuals do not, sometimes if we do it through community services, because they're doing the job for us, we do not see the poor person. But if we do it ourselves, we will meet him or her, you know, or the family, build a relationship and... Uh, and, and kind of learn about each other and those barriers will kind of be dissipated a bit. Uh, and it makes one, you know, kind of feel and see and puts things in perspective. I mean, subhanAllah, like uh, we've gone before and we visited some poor families. And, you know, sometimes you, you think like you live in an apartment and each, I mean, you know, your children have a bedroom. You know, you have your own bedroom, right? And then you go to some poor family and then you find out that like, subhanAllah, I mean, you find like seven people living in one room, using one bathroom. And literally the room that they're living in, they literally raise the mattresses or they fold them because they cannot all sleep, you know, or I mean have mattresses throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So that one room is used for everything as a living room, as a bedroom you know, as a social meeting and whatnot. Even the kitchen is very small, so the kids spend a lot of time outside, and it's hot, and it's, you know, and the area is not so great. So subhanAllah, like, when you are seeing this by yourself, this will make you uh, humble, 
and this will make you realize, you know what? And you know, so seeing this yourself, it will make you give more. Because if somebody tells you about it, you hear stories, yeah, you believe it, you will give, you know? But when you witness it, like we said, in 3D, you know, individual, yourself, that will uh, help. And also, it will distance the Muslim from arrogance. By doing this, it will distance the Muslims from arrogance because this arrogance is very dangerous and counterproductive to us. Our perfect religion, our Islam, when practices, when practiced properly, makes us or helps us overcome and remain distant from all manifestations of arrogance. And this is a very important aspect of our daily life or our, or our life that we need to work on to get that out of our minds and that arrogance uh, kind of keep it, keep it away. An arrogant man, what does he do? He looks down upon others often who have less money and he does not want to see them, talk to them, associate with them, mix with them or have any dealings with them. He will even walk away, far away from them when he sees them on the street. Uh, so we have to ask ourselves, um, can, can this be rectified by doing this? Definitely it can, by you know, meeting such individuals and so on and so forth. Uh, humble and sincere Muslims always reflect about points like this and will always do self-reflection in their hearts. Where do I stand on this issue? Am I really a person who is humble or trying to be humble? Can I do better? Can I be, am I arrogant in any way? Even without saying anything, sometimes test yourself when you meet such individuals. How do you feel towards them? Do you feel resentment and stuff like that? And this is like a, like a litmus test that we can do in ourselves. And if you feel any resentment towards them, then something is definitely wrong with us. That this resentment is there. Why is it there? Because they are less fortunate. Allah has not uh, blessed them the way He blessed you. You know, but in a way, if they're patient with what Allah has blessed them with, what Allah is giving them, but they're patient with it and they're living with it and die upon it, they're actually going to be better off than you because we know all the hadith about poor people, how they are going to be entered in paradise and so on and so forth and much quicker. And we just mentioned at the beginning of the show how important this is. So all of those things put, put in perspective and with the end of Ramadan with it together makes one really having a high kind of a, and a, like a halal type of a high, you know, the, 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 the dopamine, like we say, levels uh, released by, by your brain, it makes one very happy to do this. Well, sorry, if you think about it, it's a blessing because it's, as we know, the word zakah uh, means to purify. So when we have the 2.5% of our wealth, if we have those kind of savings, it's a purification of our wealth in the, in the obligatory zakah because we sometimes spend things in the wrong way, we overspend, we become extravagant. So it's a way to purify our wealth from those things we may misspend. And in Ramadan, you know, none of us, you know, have a perfect Ramadan. We may have said something we shouldn't have, we may have not made as much effort, we may have not taken the most effort we could have done, we fell short. So this is a blessing from Allah. We have this Zakat al Fitr to be able to give this to make up for some of the shortcomings that we all fall short from in Ramadan. So really it's a blessing to kind of, just like when we have the nawafal prayers, they make up for the shortnesses that we have in our obligatory prayers. This is a Qat al-Fitr. Exactly. Helps us to make up for the shortcomings and to add where there, we, there we, is, we, are, we, are, we is, fell short. There is deficiency in our Ramadan, for sure. Every one of us has that deficiency. And anyone who claims that his or her Ramadan was perfect, trust me, they're wrong. Nobody can make that claim, especially living in dunya. Maybe in the Akhirah when we go and, and you know, Allah will inform us, hey, you know what, you did, you did your Ramadan the best. It was perfect Ramadan. But for us to say that now, especially knowing, inshallah, we'll await another Ramadan to say that there, is not, there were no things that could be fixed or uh, amended in a way that we can do that for the next Ramadan. I'm sorry, I, I have not met that in individual that can prove to me that this has been done, that he had or she had a perfect Ramadan. There's no way. And this, this will help uh, 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 you know, a, a person purify, purification. Everything we do, you know, we do our wudu before salah, purification. Salah is a purification itself for the daily things that we're doing. Then 
fasting is a purification for our soul, right? And then uh, zakah zakah is purification of our wealth. And Sadaqatul Fitr is purification of that fasting or that sacrifice we made and that we, some of the deficiency. So there's always time for this purification. It's a never ending, uh, I don't want to say battle, but in a way it's a battle until we die. That we need to always working, work on this if self-improvement or, 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 or what we call it purification. Uh, another uh, beautiful example is that when we see the individuals like this who are poor and we're giving them sadaqat uh, al-fitr, is that we learn we will learn about their problems and maybe this relationship will continue even after Ramadan, and this in a way you are creating for yourself a good deed, and for them also their lives will be better because um, they may be you may be able to help them in other ways maybe not financially or with food. Maybe they need something else. Maybe you are expertise in something that you could help them with. And this kind of relationship fosters, it's a beautiful thing that can continue and Allah will reward you with it. Because you are helping a Muslim getting out of poverty or getting out of difficult situation, the reward is immense. I mean, we can quote many hadith, but we know the reward is multiplied, especially in Ramadan, x-fold. I mean, you just... Add a number, right? Depending on, on, on the intention and the way the, the, the act was performed. Um, so delivering our own zakat al fitr to the poor family and taking a moment to learn about their lives will give us insight about certain problems they're facing and also give us insight about us and our problems that we're having. So for example, you know, we like to call that first world problem. You know, you're in the house and you are browsing the internet, all of a sudden the internet goes off. <laughs> Right? And you're like, oh man, how come? Meanwhile, out of the 168 hours in a week, you know, the internet went off for half an hour and you're complaining. Think about that. And you think about people returning in war tour countries, for example, and you hear in the news that those people live in such horrible conditions. For example, they have electricity one hour a day and internet comes on like for 20 minutes a day. You know, and then you put that in perspective and you say, man, come on, this, this really is a first world problem, what I'm having. And that's what it is. So the perspective of your problems versus somebody else having a problem, for them, having an internet for 23 and a half hours a day is like an amazing blessing. Electricity, for that matter, right? Or having AC on. That is like living in a, in a palace for them. For you, having half an hour of electricity off or the internet, whatever it is, or water, not running water in the house, you know, because sometimes they're fixing downstairs, the pipe broke, but you are, you know, really upset. Why? Why now? Why, you know, how come pipe broke? Uh, for them, this is like nothing. But put yourself in somebody else's shoes and say, could I live for half an hour with electricity a day? Pretty good point there. Uh, time for a break. Join us, inshallah, after the short break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Obviously before the break, you know, we, you know, we kind of emphasized to put things in perspective because the whole zakat al-fitr is related to helping those who are, are less fortunate. So obviously we've, we've discussed a lot about that. And we've talked about putting it in perspective. Now, obviously zakat al-fitr is done before. So once we obviously finish now on zakat al-fitr, we want to then discuss with the viewers about Eid and the, the benefit of Eid. And uh, generally, what should we do on Eid and what shouldn't we do? And what, how, what can we do after Ramadan to keep the, as they say, the spirit of Ramadan alive? Well, first of all, uh, let's say Ramadan finished and we have announcement that the moon has been sighted and we know the next day is Eid prayer and so on. Uh, before we go even go into Eid prayer and, and Eid as a day itself, we can say that, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fasts the six days of Shawwal, which is the month following Ramadan, is uh, as if he has fasted a whole year. And uh, this is done at any time of six, six days in Shawwal. Usually, we're not allowed, it's forbidden for us to fast on the Imam Eid, which is the first day of Eid. Other than that, we can fast six days 
right after that consecutive or we can split it to Monday and Thursday or we can fast uh, white days or we can fast towards the end of the month or beginning of the month, whatever we want uh, why this is done so the person who is fasting in Ramadan does not kind of forget fasting in, in other times and this is like an encouragement and personally I believe uh, it's like a kind of a guard off for shaitan because shaitan comes back after Ramadan and to see what kind of individual you're going to be. So this is kind of like a fight between you and shaitan. It's like, I'm going to fast those six days, inshallah. So that shaitan will be like, you know what? This individual actually had some change done to him or her in Ramadan. He fasted she, you know, for the whole month. Now he's continuing this. So there is definitely a lesson for that. So we always encourage people, please do not forget to fast those six days of shawal. Beautiful thing about those six days, out of the 29 or 28 days left in Shawal, you pick those six days and go with whatever is flexible for you. Maybe it's difficult for you to fast when you're working, you know, in maybe hot conditions. Fast on the weekend, right? Or you want to fast, give yourself a break, fast Monday and Thursday. So you don't have to fast consecutive days and so on. So this is a huge benefit of, of, of fasting outside. And you know the reward Brothers and sisters, the reward is immense. As if you fasted for the whole year. So think about one day as fasting for two months. Right? That's what it equals to almost, a month and a half. So imagine one day equals to 45 or 60 days. SubhanAllah. So, I mean, that, I always tell the people, you know, when I'm giving a little talk or whatever, I said, the exchange rate, the return on investment, or ROI, or even the exchange rate that Allah has given you, that Allah has given us through many deeds, is nothing you can get. If one invests a uh, million dollars in an investment business opportunity, and he gets 10% return on that investment, what do we say? We say that's an amazing return, correct? We're saying that's like you're making extra 100,000 every year. Wow, mashallah, that's an amazing amount of money. But imagine, yaqi, you're giving one million, or let's say in this case one day, and you're getting 45 million back. What formula is that? I mean, this only Allah can do that for you. And you have to kind of think of those ways that the exchange rate for our effort that we're getting back is just another level. Or the level that our simple brains cannot even comprehend. So that's, that's, that's when we talk about what we do after Ramadan. And we will try, you know, recommendations to fast the Mondays and Thursdays outside of that as well. And fast the white days, the, the middle days, the 13 and 14 or 15 of Hijri months. And of course, after that, we'll have the, the, uh, the, the, the Hijjah, the 10 days or 9 days of the Hijjah, if we're not going for Hajj, to fast those days. So those are the, some of the fasting that we can be continuing on uh, 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 after the, the Hajj comes. As far as the day of Eid, the recommendation, of course, the first thing that person when he wakes up for his family for Salat al-Fajr is that this person before they leave the house, after, you know, praying the Fajr prayer, is to have a, a date or, or something to eat. Before we go into that, actually, I want to make a, something out there because we want to make it clear that the Eid, you're not celebrating that Ramadan has finished. Exactly. People may think that you're celebrating now that, yes, there's no more fasting. It's a celebration that Allah has allowed you to complete the month of Ramadan and has given you the ability and inshallah enabled you to have this whole month of fasting. So it's like a celebration that this has... But, but some ulama even say it's not even celebration. It's more like thanking Allah for exactly. allowing you. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a celebration of the thanks, you could say, yeah. of, that you've been able to complete this. And, and then you know, the, the whole day is about that. takbirat. Damn. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and so on, right? Uh, but some people, and the Prophet Sallallahu SubhanAllah, was so wise about this, uh, knowing that some people, you know, because it's a, like a hard cut when you stop fasting and continuing. So the, one of the things the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi put stop to people's doubts is in, after Fajr prayer, meaning that when Fajr prayer is finished, or about Eid about to start, means you have some food which is already after the dawn. So it means that it could be fasted day, but the Prophet ﷺ recommended us to have a date or, or sip of water, whatever we, it's available for us, so that we show ourselves that, you know what, 
this year really is end of Ramadan. Now it's Eid, so that we have some food. So we're not fasting, right? So the individual who goes for Eid prayer should go one way, of course, and come back the other way so you can get the most ajr. Because why? Because you are going one way and you are reciting takbirat, you're mentioning Allah's name, you're thanking Him and coming back also so you get the most of the blessing. And of course, going for Eid prayer to listen to the khutbah. Uh, and of course to, to say the takbirat that we are recommended to say on that day. And of course, after the Eid prayer, to, to uh, greet your fellow Muslim brothers and of course go to your home. And in a beautiful occasion of this day, it's of course to visit as many people as you can, get as much family and friends together because this is a day of appreciation, a celebration and kind of a, you know, a lot of times on this day, subhanAllah, because a lot of people were ibadah in ibadah in the last 10 nights, lots of fasting, lots of prayer, lots of reciting of the Quran. And this is kind of a way to catch up on those social events that we may have not been able to attend or that we have missed. And this is a beautiful opportunity. And I recommend all of us, very important, because in this day and age, when so many other holidays, holidays or or days are celebrated that are not Muslim holidays and we allow or how can I say uh, some of our children get to acknowledge those days we need to make Eid special Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha very very special for our children really I say to everybody please plan for your Eid al-Fitr with your children a few months ahead surprise them buy gifts for them make it special uh, if you have money, gifts for them, save it, keep saving. If it's difficult for you, do whatever you can to make this day special and memorable for them. Have a nice get-together, have some recitation, some poems being recited with your children so that they will remember something memorable to be done. Some, some game, something that you don't usually play with your children that they will like. Because subhanAllah, trust me, if we do this, they will remember this for years on end. And you know, when they're facing difficulty in their lives, because Allah will test every one of us, and if they're facing difficulty in their lives, and you know, maybe they're going astray and stuff like that, then the minds will come, the brain will you know, remind them, you know, subhanAllah, do you remember the good times in Eid? Oh, Eid, that was Ramadan, end of Ramadan. That was a good time. Why was it a good time? You know why? Because we're like this, because we are doing it for sake of Allah and so on. And this person will maybe come back. I remember one of my friends, subhanAllah, he used to say, Allah tested him in life, you know. And he said when he was a child, every night he would recite Surah Al-Ikhlas before he went to bed. And he remembers it, at a kursi and so on. He remembered this. And then later on, you know, in his, you could say like, weird days when he was a teenager and a, a, a adult, he had some misgivings about life, how he was doing. But subhanAllah, he remembered. He said, even when I was disobeying Allah, he said, every night, I would recite this. It kind of reminded him. And he said, that was a good feeling for me. SubhanAllah, he said, that was a good feeling. Even though he says, I was doing horrible things. But he said, this was a good, good, good feeling for me and made my heart feel, feel soft and humble and like this. And he said, SubhanAllah, he said, later on when I realized my wrong ways, he said, you know what? Where can I go from this place that I realize this is wrong, but I want to go to a good place. What can I do? How do I want to feel? He said, I remember feeling good about when I used to recite Surah Ikhlas at night. You know what? I have to go back to Allah. Subhanallah. So same thing for us. If our children or any of us struggle in life, they will remember the good days. So we need to make those special, those days very special for them, for our families, for, for our ex circle of friends and so on. To my families as well, I mean, we've only got like maybe three or four minutes left, but it's also important to mention this is a chance for you to build bridges with those family members that you may have fallen out with and we know it's islamically and that's a whole episode alone the importance of keeping family ties to the extent that your good deeds will not be raised up to allah where there is a cut with the family ties so this is really a chance to make an effort realize that eid is a family time reach out to those you've cut off even if it's simply with a text message exactly reach out to them and greet them, exactly. at least greet them Eid, make that effort. Very important. Uh, the ties of kin and kinship are, uh, like you said, subhanAllah, there's so many topics about this. 
And you know, this should be the day where we reach out to everyone, as many people as we can, and kind of get that personal vendetta or personal problem you had with somebody, overcome it. Be the first one to initiate the contact. Don't be waiting for the other individual to make the contact. And that's interesting be because the probably this will be towards the end of the show now, but the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the wasl, the wasl is the one who keeps family ties. He said the wasl is not the one, or the one who keeps family ties, is not the one who keeps ties with the ones who keep ties with him. Rather, he is the one who keeps ties with the ones who cut him off. So this is the real person. It's really easy for you to keep family ties with your best buddy, cousin, or the cousin who you're really close with. That's no challenge there. There's no real effort. There's no real, to some extent, real reward as much as when the person who's your family member or your relative, and you call him, he insults you. He hangs up. You knock on his door, he doesn't let you in. You try to message him, he never messaged you back. But you keep on doing it. This is the real person who, who keeps is the keeping ties. the family ties. This is the real person who is getting the main reward. So I, th- I think pretty much to end, and you know, Jazakallah khair for coming on, but pretty much to end, Eid is a time to thank Allah that you've reached the end of Ramadan. You've had that chance many, many people didn't have to do more good deeds, to do fasting, to do Qiyam al-Layl, to do all these extra deeds. And Eid is a time to be with the family, to put, to let bygones be bygones, and to reach out to those uh, family members that you've had issues with, to correct. And also it is, a, it is a way now to continue now after Ramadan, and this I'll end on this, continue now in Ramadan, on the good way that you've been doing in Ramadan, giving up those bad habits, giving up those sins, to try and keep that ongoing now after Ramadan. And Jazakallah khair for coming on. Me. And may Allah reward you all for tuning in. So inshallah, let's take away from Ramadan, like I mentioned, a positive change. People like to talk about New Year resolutions. We don't have that in Islam. We have Ramadan resolutions that you will carry on now, what you've done, hopefully inshallah in Ramadan, and continue in those ways of goodness inshallah and until next time by the permission of Allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh